The fight against human trafficking got a major boost with the release of Call to Freedom, a parent's guide to understanding human trafficking and healing their children. And today I am talking with the primary author of that book, Ruth Atkins. <clears throat> she is the mother of a young woman who is a survivor of human trafficking. Ruth has learned firsthand the survivor's difficult journey and the family's shock and heartbreak. Her desire is for parents to understand the, um, the dynamics of human trafficking to help prevent it from happening to their children. During Ruth's early years, she studied creative writing and tried without success to publish her works. While composing this book, however, she realized that it was just the assignment God had been preparing for her. Her calling is to set people free from trauma and the wounds they carry. Ruth has been part of an inner healing deliverance ministry team for 20 years. Ruth, thank you so much for coming on Triumph Talks. I'm very excited to talk to you about your book. That um, you are the primary author. I'm going to let you explain that. Uh, it was a hot new release on Amazon, number one, and a number one bestseller. So you may have uh, had a hard time getting some books published in the past, but you sure succeeded with this one. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Yes. Thank you for all your help with it, Melanie. It was oh, great working with you. I loved it. Yeah, I was the publisher of the book, which I have right over my shoulder here, and you saw at the beginning. So I want to start. Uh, my first question really is, how did you become connected with Call to Freedom in order to work with them on this book? Okay, well, it's a little bit of a story in that um, eight years ago, my granddaughter um, was trafficked. And actually how I found out about it, it was a Sunday night in late summer and I received a phone call from my daughter and, and she said, hey mom, did, did you hear the evening news tonight? And I said, no, I didn't. She said, well, the police arrested two people um, for human trafficking and I recognized the names of those two people. And she proceeded to tell me they were friends of my granddaughter, new friends. New friends. And, yeah, new friends. And um, so my daughter had called my granddaughter and she said, thank goodness she was home. And when she told her, she said, oh, no, oh, no, mom, this isn't good. This isn't good. They're going to think I snitched. And then she said, um, I may be their th the third victim. And to back up in that police or in that newscast, the police had said they had identified two victims and were looking for the third. And uh, that was my granddaughter. And the very next day, um, a detective showed up at my granddaughter's place of work and he assured her, you're not in trouble. Um, we're just wanting to come downtown and we're gonna ask you a few questions. And he had a female officer with him as well. And he, and he said to her, call your mom so she doesn't worry. And um, <clears throat> following the questioning, the officer actually drove my granddaughter to her home, to her parents' home that was about 15 miles out of town. And um, so of course my daughter had been waiting for her. She was outside pulling weeds and crying trying to keep herself calm during those next two hours that it took. Mm -hmm. And um, so the car drove up and she ran and embraced her daughter. And um, then she felt a nudge on her shoulder and it was the detective. And he said, don't ask too many questions. Just listen. She's mm -hmm. a victim in this. And I tell you, um, that is the best advice I think anybody could ever receive in the first moments of learning that their loved one has been trafficked. Because, you know, as parents, <clears throat> we sometimes think, oh my gosh, you know, when they get into trouble or something happens to them, if only they would have listened to me, if only they would have, you know, not driven so fast in the car, <laughs> that accident might not have happened or those kinds of things. But, um, yeah, to hear that they've been trafficked, that is, uh, that that has to be extremely traumatic for parents and, and a grandmother and grandparents. I'm sure there would be an instantaneous knee-jerk reaction to trauma that might not be the right reaction. Yeah. 
what you're saying. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, my daughter um, said that, and actually just recently we, we talked a little bit about it and she had shut down. She said she shut down. It's those first two or three weeks. She said she couldn't keep track of what was, what happened first or second, you know, but mm -hmm. um, a few days later, she, they did go down to the FBI office because they had trafficked my granddaughter over state lines. So FBI gets involved. And so they, can I just ask you, was your, was your granddaughter missing or anything like that? So there, it wasn't like she was missing, but this was happening to her. And, and she was working full time. She had her own apartment. Okay. Um, her mom. And so it can happen sort of under the radar. Exactly. Do yes. you know how long it had been going on? And uh, before it was revealed? Not really. Okay. You know, that's, that's a deal. Um, uh, at least to me, my granddaughter hasn't shared her story. Oh, okay. Just bear, yeah. just some. So what I know is what I experienced at, on her journey to recovery the next two years. Mm. So that's basically, yeah, she hasn't really shared much at all. Wow. Yeah. Well, I can understand where she wouldn't want to talk about those things, although it's very good for victims to talk amongst each other. Yes. And hold it in. But but it would be hard to talk to somebody who wouldn't necessarily understand. Um, yeah, I think she, she mm -hmm. might in time, but that's, you know, that's yeah. what the cult, call to freedom agency, working with an agency, because she did, I know extenuously, I'm sure she did with um, Becky, who is the director of call to freedom, the agency that we yes. work with. And um, then she yeah, has I, trauma counseling and, and then I'll tell you more about that in a little bit, but. Yeah. So, so the first question being how you got connected to call to freedom. Mm -hmm. So your, your granddaughter was discovered in this way mm -hmm. that she had been a victim. Um, and then th that led you to find call to freedom. Right. And that was a journey because call to freedom mm -hmm. was not yet in place. So Oh. The next months, our, our our thought was, you know, and when I say our, um, my daughter and I were, we talked a lot. And so if, or even if I say I, it's always the uh, us together. I just want to make that clear because my daughter never left, left her, her own daughter's side, you know. Yeah. But um, anyway, so she, she felt like, you know, if we get her counseling, um, we couldn't have a new place to live because even though the FBI said there was um, funds available for victims such as this, the the um, amount available was in apartments that were kind of on the shady side of town. Oh. Else, they were way too expensive. So she stayed where she was at, yeah. thinking, "Well, change she in life. danger? Were you were you were you at anxious at all that, that some well, retaliation we, was coming?" I, that's where. Ignorance and or denial came in, mm -hmm. I think. Um, we felt that if, you know, change the locks and the doors and get her some counseling and she'll probably be fine. But the truth of the matter is, and we didn't find this out until six months later after we had contacted, finally, when Becky, when Becky had started her agency, um, mm. is that she was, my granddaughter was trafficked by a gang. So mm -hmm. even though the, the two were arrested and behind bars with a $200,000 bond, their friends were not. And when that's it's a gang. Why, oh. Yes. And so we, she would tell us um, people were following her. She would tell us that a car drove up to her and called her a snitch. And, mm -hmm. and we thought, what is all this about, you know? Oh, and, well, that makes me think there should have been a whole lot more money available to move you to a safe place. And not money to move you into an unsafe place. Yeah. But yeah, wow. that's true. How long ago was this? And and or have this these was, kinds of it was eight years ago. Okay. So right. does she feel free from the gang threats now or the well? Or, so what happened know? was uh we, we finally connected with Call to Freedom. It it was about six months um where when she, when my granddaughter first met with Becky. And so there was that transition time. Um, and then um, I was on it. I felt like the Lord, excuse me, I got to grab a swallow here. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> I was on, actually went on a 
trip to Israel about four months after she was trafficked. And um, in the meantime, my, my granddaughter had lost her job because she didn't go to work. Um, and then she became homeless. So she was going and living with friend to friend to friend. So it was on that trip, though, that um, I felt the Lord tell me, ask your granddaughter to live with you. And I went, oh, my gosh, I, I think that's a big order. But it mm -hmm. had, to, had to have come from him or I would have never done it. But so wow. when I go home, I, I talked to my daughter and her husband about it. And we agreed. Let's, let's give it For a safety. try. So did you live a long ways from where? No, see, I lived, I lived very close to even where she was working. Oh, okay. So it was a good match. And of course, her parents were out of town, you know, further out of town and so on. So, mm -hmm. um, so yes, yeah, so she moved in on her 21st birthday. Okay. And then it took another two years um, meeting with, she met with Call to Freedom, did well for the first she did very well, actually. And actually, I think she felt like she was really getting settled and everything. And then she decided to go out of town um, with a friend and returned about, I don't know, four months later. And then she, um, all together, it took two years before she agreed to go to um, addiction recovery. And then mm -hmm. she was she went out of state to a restoration home because it wasn't safe for her to be here. That was the whole oh, deal. Okay, that's good. Because when you're telling me that the gangs are driving up and yeah. calling her a snitch, I would be really worried about her life. Right, exactly. Yeah. And Okay. So yeah, that's, yeah. Was that something y'all had to pay for or was there? Um, no, this this or, um, this is a lot. It was a lot like Call to Freedom. A little, a little different okay. style, but um, it, it's no charge. It was no charge at all. That's good. Funded. Mm -hmm. So it was your your granddaughter's uh, victimization that eventually led you to, to meet Becky, uh, who I interviewed um, just mm -hmm. before you. We'll, we'll have a link from her interview to yours, in fact, and to, to get connected to Call to Freedom. So kind of jumping ahead, but I know that you have a lot to say. Um, but let's jump into the question now that um, why did you write this book? Because this is something that you did in conjunction with Call to Freedom. In fact, the title of the book is Call to Freedom, and then we have the tagline. So do you want to kind of share a little uh, bit of detail about how the book came about mm -hmm. and um, how you became, you're really the the primary author, if you want to talk about that and and all the pieces of it to kind of share how this book will help parents. Right. Well, you know, then or, over the, the next two years, I, um, I, I started volunteering with Call to Freedom after my granddaughter was safe and sound and um, no longer living with me. That's, I started and I was actually there four and a half years. And so I learned more about um, trafficking during that time. And it was right after I stepped down after four and a half years, Becky called one day and she said, you know, we're getting more and more calls from parents asking for resources regarding how to help their child. And would, could you put together some resources for them? And my first thought was having kind of been a, going always to the either my journal or typing up my feelings. Um, I thought of a book because I thought or I didn't even think of a book. I just thought of a resource guide and thought that's what I would have needed. I would have needed to know like what, what were the, some of the warning signals because I didn't know them now, but I didn't know them before, but I learned them through the information lunches with call to freedom. And what are the, what are those risk factors? Um, again, I did, we didn't know them then. And so those are some of the things in that I felt was very important for parents to know ahead of time so for two reasons, one is it's for a parent whose child has been trafficked and how, where do we go now? And then it's two, it's for parents, but it's for teachers, it's for youth care workers, um, anybody who interacts with children and or young adults. Um, so to identify a warning signs of what could possibly happen. And even, I was in a chain store the other day in the kind of in the cosmetic department and shampoo and in that area. And I saw a young girl um, and she was stocking shelves. I don't think she was probably over 18, maybe one of her first jobs. And standing beside her was this tall, good looking guy. 
she was on a ladder and he was looking up to her talking. I thought, you know what, this, this doesn't, I don't know. I was suspectful and I just better let it go. And then I went for a few more aisles and it was a little later. Here's this same young girl and there's that same young man. And I wondered to myself, do these stores who are employing these naive women, young women, young girls, do they ever tell them how did they, that they could, that's prime recruiting ground, right? Where that young girl was at prime mm -hmm. because she knows she's working hard and they have a deal for her. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I know that there's a lot of, uh, really important teaching in the book that, that you give that will help to identify these kind of situations where we might be completely oblivious Mm -hmm. But it's such a huge problem, and it's not just a third world uh, crime. It's it's right here in our own backyards, and and the fact that your your granddaughter was being trafficked, and you, nobody even knew, it just right. shows that they they can be so manipulated and brainwashed that they don't and groomed that they don't even know that that's what's happening to them, and or by the time they realize that they're so far in that they they can't get out on their own or they can't really seek help as, as easily. Um, in the book, you are introduced as GMA, mm -hmm. right? And so you're, you, and you start by, by just sharing who you are. And then the book is divided into many different chapters that teach important lessons from experience. Um, I know you have a lot of quotes in there from other people, mm -hmm. uh, mostly women who've been trafficked. Um, and then there's also, uh, another contributor who who was a traffic victim who shares her stories in special boxes. Right. And, and you yeah. know how that came about was, um, like I mm -hmm. said, we we're starting to write it like a, a just a resource guide. At, but I went to a meeting at Call to Freedom. It was a staff meeting and Mary, the other contributor, um, mm -hmm. and two other survivors were in that meeting and they were teaching um the staff about the importance of a mentor in a, mm -hmm. um, and, and as they were doing that, they were telling stories and they were relating things. And I went, Oh my gosh, this information is powerful. It would be, we should put it in this book by then we we're starting to call it a good, or we called it a guide. We called it a resource guide forever. Okay. And, um, yeah. So Mary sent that to me and then she sent oh, I've got something on warning signals. You want me to send that? And she had all this information, which we started to include. And, and I thought, my gosh, this is becoming a very powerful resource. Yes. And then as it was going further, Mary and I were talking, she says, we need to talk to Becky and see if we can't get this published. So that's how oh. it came into a book. So that's how it came about. You, you, you really got it started and you did a lot of research. And mm -hmm. then Mary came. I hope that we get Mary on the show to talk about mm -hmm. her contribution to it. Um, and so how long did you work on it? With about about a year. Yeah, about a, a year. year. Mm -hmm. Okay. A little over a year. Yeah. And then um, we we're able to, it was, it was wonderful. I was able to meet you actually, because I published a book for another human trafficking nonprofit that's down in my area. I'm, I'm down in the Houston area called Hands of Justice. And I had published their book, which was a lot of stories from the uh, mostly women, but there, there's a, a man's um, um, labor trafficking, but mostly yes. women. And then there's art to go with it. So that's how I met y'all, even though y'all are up in South Dakota right. <laughs> and I'm down in Texas, but right. you see how things get connected. And um, yeah, it is a very important resource. And I think it's important uh, for those who don't necessarily have a victim yet in their lives, right? but as a preventative um, that is so critical. So uh, let's move to the next question. I think it follows this really well, which is just how do you encourage parents whose children have been trafficked? Because um, I know you said that they were getting calls from parents who, who needed to know what to do. So how have you been able to step in and help those parents? And what would you say? I hope that we have parents or guardians, loved ones watching the show uh, I don't hope that they've had children be trafficked, but mm -hmm. I hope that those whose children have been trafficked come across the show and get what you have to share right now. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I think um, I think one important thing is 
um, for parents to know, well, first of all, not to blame the child, that they're a victim, or even if it's a young adult, <clears throat> like our loved one. But the other thing is, oh, sorry, I'm going to have to have another swallow. <clears throat> the other thing is um, to understand that their loved one was chosen, targeted, and, re and groomed with um, flattery, with saying that, um, you know, we've, I've got a way for you. If you're interested in modeling, I have somebody who can you can talk to or music is another another thing. Sports, too, now, especially because young boys are also being um, targeted. And so that's that's some of the the things. But I think the most important things once your child has been and you and identified is um, that you can be your child's ally. <clears throat> and a, a lady who I met shortly after that too, who had done some ministry with um, victims of trafficking in Thailand. And she, she said to me um, that she has seen many people come out of that type of abuse, which was encouraging for me. She didn't tell me it could be a long journey, however, which it can be one step forward and two step back. That's the thing Becky re, um, reiterated. But the other thing is she said, always speak hopeful words over her and about her and correct anyone who doesn't. Mm. And she said, believe she will come through this and always look for the best. And wow. that, that, those were words I really tried to live by during that time. Those are those are profound. I think that that we all need to to follow that that advice very carefully. Yes. But, but when you're dealing with a situation like human trafficking that's so devastating in, in so many ways, to hear those kinds of words of encouragement and and affirmation, probably at, at first might feel um, almost impossible, but yet we have to know that, that we can overcome. How is your granddaughter doing today? I would give her an A plus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's doing so well. We were fortunate. She um, did move back to our area about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And um, she's got a, a, ni a very nice job. Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. It's really starting to blossom, really starting to blossom here. So, so that, that advice has come true. It has. We've had a miracle, mm -hmm. I believe. We were, honestly, Melanie, we were, in the book, we identify that only 3% are ever identified or come out of it. Yeah. But to know that that statistic has changed in just a year since that book has been published. Really? It's, yes. It's 1% now. <gasps> wow. It's 1% and it's because um, they are either Run afraid down. to leave. Or, huh? It's gone down. It's gotten it's worse. Only one percent now. And oh I asked. Um, actually, I was at an event last night, and I asked about it. And they said, um, "I said, Could, is, you mean in the world or in our nation?" She said, "In our nation." Wow, that that's gut punch right there. I'm sorry. I was. I know. I was hoping you were going to tell me the statistic was improving, but that's no, worse. It is. It's worse. And and, and uh, I I don't remember that I had the numbers at one time of how many are trafficked. But it's just, do you, do you, do you know offhand um, what the numbers I, are? I don't it's, have it in hand. No, yeah, I don't. When you, I don't. But it's, it's in the, it's like in the, well, worldwide, obviously it's in the high millions. I think in our country, it's, it's up there yes. in the high hundred thousands. But mm -hmm. to think only 1% of mm -hmm. that is, it's, uh, that's a lot of suffering that's going on. And, now I'll just wow. tell you one more, one more <laughs> statistic too. Um, yeah. And this is really Becky's area, but. Yeah, we need to call her in and remind us. I'm sorry, I'm I'm a writer, and so are you. We're not numbers people, so I'm sorry that we didn't come prepared with the numbers. But yeah, but, but just um, alone in 2013, um, yeah. and we're a small state, um, but um, but I won't tell you how many they had clients. But the age range was eight years old to 64 were their clients. So wow. you see, it's across the board. We just it's. You can't even put it in a box. You can't. Oh, there needs to be there needs to be so much more conversation about this and mm -hmm. um, what's causing it, what's driving it. You know, I could we could get onto that topic, which is off topic, but it's not. 
Um, because I, I think people just, you know, when they participate in pornography and they participate in things that are, I think isn't hurting anyone. Well, that's actually what's feeding the appetite to have such a demand for something so horrendous. Uh, it matters. Morality matters in, you know, being clean in what we watch and what we do. You know, people think, oh, it's, I'm only hurting me, but no, where it's not, it's not hurting anyone. But the truth is the things that drive this appetite, which is a massive, it's actually the, the biggest crime now more than drugs because you, it's a product you can resell and resell and resell. So right. you know, the gangs are very involved, the cartel very involved, but uh, but that that's heartbreaking. I'm sorry to hear that the statistics are not improving yet. And um, I hope that we can be a part of that. I hope we can get your book out. Now, your book is available on Amazon mm -hmm. um, in Kindle as well as hardback. Um, I think it's I'm just a hardback book person or paperback, I guess what I mean. But, you know, mm -hmm. hard copy is what I meant. Right. Um, it's just nice to read, though, you know, to have that book and write in the margins or highlight. Um, I, I would hope people would buy that version just and really study it and be aware. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so it's available on Amazon primarily, but that helps to drive the avail uh, the awareness as well, because when a book does well on Amazon, then you know, we get more reviews. And so that's one of the reasons why we primarily have it there. But I do believe it's an expanded distribution as well. So it should be available on other other book sales platforms. Um, so do you, um, I want to shift over because this is a channel that interviews authors and is for people who are aspiring authors who maybe have something like you do, an important story to tell and people to help. So um, from an author standpoint, now you're a published author, you're a best-selling author. What advice do you have for other aspiring authors? Okay. Well, I think, um, I would speak to the author, the potential author that's wanting to do a, a personal experience book. And the I think the thing that we need to overcome with that, because I'll, I'll tell you that was my struggle, is vulnerability. And um, I tried to d do a personal experience like 20 some years ago. Long story short, I put it aside. But one of the things was a just not wanting to expose other family members um, that were part of that could have been within that experience. I'll just leave it at that. And this time with this book, I had a very difficult time wanting to have my name attached to it. Again, I think it was exposure. Um, but Becky, um, so here's what you need. <laughs> this is what helpful. You need a mentor like Becky, um, who is in my life. And she said, you know, you can tell a story a testimony and that it's impactful. But when you tell that story and you add a name and a face to it, it is, it doubles the impact. And so that was part of it. And then I had a dream and in that dream, um, and I'm not a big dreamer, but this was one I felt was speaking to me. I was in an outdoor event, a picnic kind of, and all these people were lined up at picnic tables. And as I walked by, everyone had a name tag on. And then I recognized one of the names and it was the name of a person that I had been researching on, on trafficking and on some of the dynamics. And I thought when I woke up, yes, I'm supposed to have my name attached to this book. So vulnerability, if we can overcome that, I think, and a good mentor and a great publisher <laughs> like Melanie. Wow. Thank you. That's really, Wow. I love that. I love that you shared that dream. Um, sometimes that can take vulnerability just to say, you know, God spoke to me and, yeah. and uh, God guided what I'm doing. And, and I, I come from that, um, that place as well. And my mission to be a publisher is I, I very much feel that it's a calling and it comes from um, uh, my own tragedy that I talk about in some of the introductory videos, but mm -hmm. I, um, I'm, I'm so glad you said that because I think when it really comes down to it, everything that we do that's meaningful, when it's um, coming from a place of, of um, divine direction, and I'll, 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 I'll put the endorsement on your book that mm -hmm. it's very powerful because God helped you write it 
you did. brought the stories. You have so many different examples and um, you have Mary's contribution, which is so powerful. And then you have others too. There's a section towards the end where you have a lot of other people that, that gave their insights. I'm guessing it's probably people that maybe Call to Freedom worked with and that, mm -hmm. that provided some, some of their insights. But um, right. yeah. And so I just want to say one last thing is I just, I just thank God and give him all the glory for the rescue and um, healing of my granddaughter because without his, mm. his presence with his direction and, um, and without call to freedom's assistance, we wouldn't yeah. have this happy ending. I know we yeah. wouldn't. And there's just not enough organizations like call to freedom out there. There um, isn't. Mm -hmm. Now, I know in talking with Becky in, in the previous interview that I did, that you are, as an organization, seeking to grow uh, and have a national reach. So I, I, I hope that people will pay attention to, to the organization as well as pick up the book. And um, I will put the uh, web address to the link to the book and also the web address to the organization. Um, I'll pin it in the top of the comments of this video. So I encourage everyone who's watching to be sure to go and learn about Call to Freedom and learn about the book of the same title. And thank you so much, Ruth, for coming on. I bring up your cover here. This is a beautiful book um, and it's a powerful book. And I, I really encourage everyone who's watching this to get a copy because the truth is, Anyone can be trafficked, and um, we need to be there for each other. Yes.